I take a great privilege in introducing architect B. Surya Prakash, the founder of SP Square Sustainable Design Solutions, completed his UG from Adiyaman College of Engineering and MR Sustainable Design from SPA Vijayawada. Um, he, is, he has established a firm that has been uh, excellent in doing small part in reducing carbon and GHG emissions by proper designing simulations and further understanding the building's performance. He has always had a keen interest towards sustainability and sustainable design approach from his bachelor's, which led to his post-graduation also. He is currently working as assistant professor in the Rajalakshmi School of Architecture, Chennai, and also running his firm parallelly. He is an architect and sustainable professional who can do a small part in reducing carbon emission and GHG emission by the proper designing and simulating of these buildings for further understanding of its performance. His strength lies in the learning and understanding of the sustainable standards, which involve new rating systems, building performance in terms of energy modeling and simulations. He is always willing to contribute more towards this irreplaceable environment and a good approach for a sustainable lifestyle. He is a member of many prestigious governing bodies and councils starting from COA, IAA, IAID, INTAC, IGBC, ISHRE, SESI, IASLE, IBC, ISTE, FA, FSAI, GACS. He has measurement skills towards weather stations, sky simulator, ballometer, temperature probe, H2BO data loggers, velocity meter, particulate matter counter, voltage, a current log, illuminance meter, luminance gun, weather station. He is an expertise of softwares based on building energy modeling and simulation with respect to data analysis. He is a certified professional from GEM, Griha, IGBC, Greens Lab, Fitwell, um, Fitwell Ambassador, Eco Districts, Lead GA, Well AP and H. He is a regular attendee and participant of NPTEL courses and completed over 15 courses uh, within this short span of time. He has also presented close to 15 papers in national and international conferences within his four years of graduation. And all these uh, conference papers has an impact factor of uh, factor that ranges from three to eight. To name a few, designing of an IGBC green village, a case of Etti Kopaka, Vishagapatnam, Andhra Pradesh, impact assessment of courtyard on thermal comfort levels in a naturally ventilated residential building, a case of Karekudi district, Tamil Nadu, India, energy performance assessment of aerodynamic high-rise residential complex, a case of Vishagapatnam, adoption of retrofitting catalog for cutting down electricity consumption of residents in the warm and humid region, a case of Vijayawada, Andhra Pradesh, assessment of fenestration designed towards energy conservation for an office building. Thank you so much, sir. You can now start the session. Thank you for the wonderful introduction, man. Yes. Uh, is my screen visible now? Yes. Yes, ma'am? Yes, ma'am? Yes. Ma ah, okay. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so, uh, let's jump into today's webinar, uh, that is uh, Glass and Architecture. And uh, this is the agenda I planned for uh, today's webinar. So, uh, first, we will have a, a small uh, introduction about uh, what is Glass and uh, uh, why we have to see that, uh, particularly about Glass now. And uh, then we will move on to how we can select uh, Glass for our fuzzer and a window, like what are the criteria we have to keep in our mind while selecting a glass, and uh, what are the sustainable factors we have to see in selecting a, a glass, and what makes the glass sustainable, that and all we will see. And then we will see uh, what is the uh, role of glass in uh, green buildings, because uh, uh, at the present, uh, present situation uh, demands uh, more green buildings because we all know the climate change and greenhouse gas emissions and all. the only uh, solution our our construction and architecture industry can uh, give is uh, moving to green and sustainable way okay. uh, and and glass is uh, playing a major role in that 
Okay. Then you will see some case studies uh, which involves uh, glass as a primary material in that building and how it's performing in that particular building. And then last, uh, we will see what are the uh, current innovations that are happening in the glass industry. Okay. Then we will end with that. We'll have a small Q&A session and then we can end the seminar. So, first of all, like why we have to see glass? Because uh, we all know uh, there is a transformation of architecture uh, happening. Okay, uh, uh, we can see this. As you can see, these are all the buildings. Okay, that is a that is, these are the commercial buildings only in the Gurgaon place. Okay, that, that is being built uh, established in the last decade. Okay, so imagine all over India how much uh, uh, these glass boxes must have uh, uh, must have established. Okay, so. So uh, this is the transformation of architecture we are seeing. Okay, whether we like it or not, this is the way we are moving forward. Okay, because every every establishment uh, wants to uh, wants to be uh, uh, be the type of landmark uh, landmark that, that their establishment is demanding them to create, and then uh, so so uh, the, the material they are choosing is glass okay because glass is an outstanding material that makes their establishment to to be in uh, in their own uh, to be in their own uh, entity okay so uh, not only the commercial buildings like industrial buildings educational this is an industrial building in uh, mysore and then uh, this is an uh, educational campus in Hubli, this is a bank in Goa, and then this is a Olympia Tech Park. Uh, uh, you know, you must, must know. Sir, sorry for the interruption. Uh, yes, can you sir. speak a little louder? Uh, it is, okay, uh, okay. It, it, it is uh, kind of muffled, the voice. Okay, can, can you hear me now? We can, clear, we can hear you, sir, but the voice is less compared to the previous sessions. Okay, okay. Yes. Uh, let me check now. Should I, should I repeat from the start again, ma'am, or can I continue now? You can just continue, sir. We were able to hear, but the voice is not clear or audible enough for recording. Okay. So now is it now clear? Is it clear? Uh, yes, sir, kind of okay. 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 Uh, so as I was saying, uh, this is an industrial building and uh, in uh, Mysore, and this is an uh, educational campus in uh, uh, Hubli, and this is a bank building in Goa. This is Olympia Tech Park in Chennai. And this is uh, uh, Rajiv Gandhi International Airport. Okay, and this is one hotel. I forgot where it is. So, so as you, as you can see, many of all these buildings is uh, the the facade is completely uh, the facade is full of glass. Okay, so. So that, that brings the question uh, whether whether it is done correctly or not, whether it is whether it is the right way to do or not. Okay. Uh, so now, uh, yes. So uh, many people must have, must be wondering whether glass is a sustainable material or not. Okay. Even my my students, uh, they they are uh, they are not they are hesitating to. Uh, uh, is it to use glass in their building because they have this doubt whether glass is not they are in the assumption glass is not a sustainable material but that is wrong okay glass is as much as sustainable material okay so uh, for sustain this this is a, a major part in sustainability okay uh, it's called the triple bottom line of sustainability. Sustainability is a holistic picture where it involves these three things uh, uh, in it. Okay, so this, this is uh, people, planet, and profit. We, we also call it as uh, three P's. Okay, so uh, what is this and how it is uh, related to fuzzards? We will see in the later slides. But first, I will explain what is this. Okay, people uh, being that uh, whoever residing in a particular building should be should be comfortable and then planet uh, we should not uh, we should we should see to that the, that our planet will be uh, damaged in a very less possible way uh, but because without every every action it, it will uh, uh, create some degradation of the planet okay so we have to we have to make sure that uh, we can't completely stop the uh, uh, impact but we, we should uh, we should have uh, we should reduce the impact in uh, every possible way and then profit uh, the building should the the, the building should uh, bring uh, prof profit by using sustainability, which it will by uh, by using this energy efficiency and then uh, bringing comfort to the people. Okay. 
I won't go much into sustainability because this is about glass, and I will I will speak about only how glass is being involved in this uh, sustainability. Okay. So. Um, so why you have to see uh, about this, uh, how this is related to facade is, uh, as you can see, uh, the building is being uh, heated, our building is heated, okay, that's that's why we are depending on our mechanical ventilation like fan and air conditioning and all. Okay, so how, uh, what are the factors that making our building uh, heat enough is these things. There are two two types of gains, okay, one is external heat gains, other one is internal heat gains. Okay, the external heat gains are uh, the conduction. Conduction is the way of heat. Conduction. You all must know what is conduction. So we, we must have studied in the lower classes. So conduction through our wall surfaces, and then conduction through our windows, and then conduction through our roofs. So th those three are the external uh, factors that is uh, that is making the heat gains. And the internal factors would be the lighting fixtures we are using, and then uh, the, the equipments we are running. Okay, and then the number, of, the, the amount of uh, uh, the people who are residing in the uh, building, they will also uh, uh, they will also give heat heat gains. But then there are other miscellaneous factors also. Okay, um, so uh, if you put percentage to those, uh, the roof from the roof you will be having almost ten to twenty percent of heat gain, and then from the walls also 20, ten to twenty percent, and then from the glaze, glazing you will have twenty to thirty percent. Okay, and then through fresh air, that means uh, when you are keeping your window and door opening, the hot air will enter the building and that also will bring the heat. Okay, and then the internal loads, that is of almost 30%. Okay, so this internal load, we can't do much because uh, we can't compromise the function of the building. But the rest, 70%, if designed carefully, you can reduce as much heat gain as possible. Why this heat gain is to be reduced? Because this heat gain is a major uh, 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 in will have major impact on the energy efficiency of the building. If the heat gain is more, then you have to depend more on your mechanical ventilation, that is your fan and air conditioning. Okay, if the heat gain is less, then you can depend less on your mechanical ventilation. Okay, and in that, glazing, these windows have 20 to 30%. Okay, that's why uh, selecting appropriate uh, glasses is important. Okay, so uh, that, that brings to our next uh, uh, part, that is uh, facade glass selection. Okay, so by selecting a glass, what are the uh, criteria that we should keep in mind is, uh, it will be these three. Okay, it is safety, sustainability, and then aesthetics. Safety will be like uh, the glass you are selecting, it should cope with uh, the design standards and the, uh, the design standards and the uh, structural standards of the uh, of the building. For example, the glass should withstand uh, the impact load and then wind load, dead load. What are the loads uh, that should be uh, uh, created in the building? The, the glass should be able to withstand all those. Okay. Otherwise, otherwise it would it would create a major uh, catastrophic problem. Okay. Um, and then uh, next would be sustainability. Sustainability being uh, uh, why sustainability part is important is because uh, that this part is bringing uh, the energy efficiency to the building. Okay, so the, whether whether the glass can bring uh, energy efficiency to the building or not, that you have to check. Okay, and then of course the aesthetic part. Okay, so uh, because in the in the facade or envelope glass. Glass will be the first part that will stand out uh, without doing anything. For example, if your facade want to stand out, okay, you you uh, you can the window will be the first part uh, that is that is being uh, focused on 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 any facade. Okay, so uh, these three will be the major uh, uh, selection criteria for any glass, and then. There are some sustainable factors also you have to you have to uh, see while selecting the class. Those, uh, but before going to discuss what are those, I would like to uh, see why we have to see those. Uh, okay, so for any building, uh, the human comfort is actually uh, 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 characterized into these three perspectives. Okay, we have visual comfort that is like uh, uh, the connectivity between the interior and the exterior, and then you have thermal comfort. Uh, thermal comfort being like uh, uh, you, your body, we have, we have optimal temperature, right? So, so your body should uh, maintain uh, maintain the uh, maintain the required temperature itself. Okay, but if you are if you are uh, if the temperature is more than your uh, required body temperature, then that is not comfortable. That is discomfort. Okay, so the thermal comfort maintaining is very important because that is that will. Uh, 
that will have major impact on this energy efficiency and then you have acoustic comfort okay uh, so to solving these three uh, we have to we have to know what is this sustainable uh, glass factors okay by understanding that that only then you can you can address these three comforts okay and then uh, yeah glass can easily uh, Though, though glass is a sustainable material, if it is not used correctly, it will bring problems like uh, extensive heat to the building and then uh, glare also. Uh, glare also it will bring. Uh, glare means like uh, though daylight is present, you are not using it. You are not getting benefited from that. Okay. If, so, if, for example, if you have full glass bazaar, you can no sunshade or nothing, and uh, uh, the the sunlight is too much sunlight is entering the building then then that you won't be you won't be like sitting just like that you will be using some screen or blinds to cover that glass so even though you you uh, you have uh, uh, you, you use the glass to let the light inside but just because by not using it correctly you are, you are not benefited getting benefit from that okay um, and then glass can uh, easily bring uh, glass is a major factor that uh, that uh, increasing your electricity bill okay and and uh, it has location specific needs okay we have to design it based on location specific needs for example uh, the cold climate you you have to focus more on heating less on cooling okay intermediate climate also it's like that 80 85 to 90 percent uh, uh, heating and then 10 percent on cooling in warm climate uh, 70 percent on heating 30 percent on cooling but in hot climate uh, only only 10 percent on uh, heating 90 percent on cooling only you have to focus so based on this understanding you have to select the uh, glass okay uh, for example the glass you are selecting for chennai okay it won't uh, chennai building it won't work uh, in uh, in the building in shimla because there are there are many factors that is uh, that is different okay first of all the location and then uh, the location is different. Uh, based on the location itself, you will be having like, for example, in Chennai, you will have uh, less clouds. Okay, that, that means like uh, uh, almost like 60-70 percent cl cl clouds only will be there. But in Shimla, if you check, you will have 90 to 95 percent cloud cover. Okay, if more cloud cover is there, then you that means you have less sunlight to fall. Okay, so there the criteria, uh, the selection criteria would be different, and in Chennai, the criteria, the selection criteria will be completely different. Okay. Uh, so before going to the sustainable factors, I will I will explain uh, how this this thing is thing is work working. Okay. So glass is a one, glass is the one material uh, that would uh, that would allow both light and heat uh, simultaneously into the building. Okay. For all the other materials, it will be only heat. Okay. But glass is the one material that will allow both the light and heat to enter the building. Okay. This this light and heat we are getting from the sun. Solar energy is a major contributor of this light and heat. Okay, and solar energy is a very big spectrum. Uh, for example, if you want to understand this, how the solar energy works, you, you can see this graph. Okay, so, uh, this is like this is how the uh, uh, spectrum is being segregated. Okay, for example, um, 250 uh, nanometer to 380 nanometer, it is a UV spectrum. Okay, from this spectrum, uh, the, uh, the 250 from the solar energy, 250 to 380 nanometer, the UV rays will be passed. Okay, and from 380 to almost 720 or 730, it is a visible spectrum. That is, whatever light you are seeing, whatever whatever light you are seeing, that is up to, if you measure, if you take the instrument and measure, that would be anywhere between 380 to 720. Okay, and after that 720 to 2500, that is your infrared spectrum. Okay, so the solar energy, it is divided into three spectrums. That is, one is UV spectrum, one the next is visible spectrum, third is uh, infrared spectrum, UV being responsible for UV rays, visible being responsible for the whatever visible light you are, uh, like light, light part, and infrared being responsible for the heat part. Okay. So, uh, the solar energy after 720, that is only contributing to the heat part. Okay. So, um, uh, the selection criteria for any glass will go like this. Okay, first you will fix the aesthetic. Okay, the design of the glass, like based on the based on your client's interest or based on your interest or based on the function of the building or typology of the building, the glass would be selected. The glass and color of the glass and type of the glass will be selected. After that selecting of the glass, you have to you have to uh, fix this performance triggers. Okay, you have to check this performance triggers. These four things. Uh, uh, 
this aesthetic part is uh, responsible for how your glass is looking this performance drivers is respon responsible for how your glass will perform okay the, the your glass being energy efficient or not will be determined by these four factors three factors to be exact this uv transmission is only responsible for how much uv rays is entering your building okay so the energy efficiency part is on this three part uh, on this three factors three drivers okay solar factor u value and light transmission we will see each one in uh, detail like simple definition we will see okay uh, vld visible light transmission the full form is so what is this vld exactly is uh, how much your glass uh, can allow light to pass inside okay for example if i am saying a uh, vld usually will be uh, 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 will be said in uh, percentage that means uh, 0 to 100 percentage okay so uh, if for example for i am saying my glass so vld is 60% that means uh, my glass can allow 60% of light to pass inside okay of how much our glass this is incident light okay this is a light falling from the sun how much our light falling from the sun from that 60% of the light will be transmitted inside okay and if you ask what is the optimum vlt uh, for a building i uh, i would say you can't decide like that okay because there are so many factors uh, that is uh, uh, so many factors we have to think before determining the optimum vlt for example uh, for each and every orientation you have different vlt okay you can't have the same visual light transmission for the glass for all the four orientations because east uh, the sun is, sun will be rising on the east and setting on the west okay so north side will be having uh, uh, more indirect light and south east and west will be having more direct light okay so so based on all this criteria and thinking only you have to you have to think about the orientation you have to think about the locality you have to think about the uh, function of the building and then you have to think about uh, uh, which uh, um, which floor your building is located and then what are the adjacent building to the so there are many factors you have to think before determining the before fixing the visual light transmission uh, of the of your glass okay that is ecbc that is called energy conservation and building code uh, that that uh, if you refer that book they will they have given uh, specific uh, uh, specific light vlt percentage for each and every climate okay for example if you see that you will understand okay uh, if i if my building is going to be located in chennai i should use this much of i should select this type of glass if my building is located in uh, rajasthan then i should select this type of glass so you will have a clear understanding about how to select glass okay and then uh, then heat gain that is direct solar radiation that is called sf solar factor okay uh, this is this this is like the vld is for the light okay and this is for the heat that is direct solar radiation for example this is my glass okay the the sun heat is directly falling on my uh, glass so uh, how much amount of uh, uh, heat my how much amount of radiation or heat my glass can directly allow inside okay uh, so if you see here uh, for example uh, solar factor usually it is like from 0 to 1 it will, it will be say so the solar factor of my glass is uh, 0.4 i am saying that means of all the heat for falling on my uh, glass only 40 percentage of the heat is allowed to come inside my building okay so uh, here you can understand how much ever less your solar factor for your glass then less heat will be transformed inside okay so this criteria is very much important for the energy efficiency part of your building the next is this is like direct solar radiation and next there is a part called indirect solar radiation okay uh, so uh, what is this uh, everyone must have know uh, come up come up across this u value term called u value u value technical uh, definition is uh, the amount of heat uh, transferred into the building uh, transfer into the building for 1 square meter area for one temperature difference one degree temperature difference that means imagine this is my glass my glass u value is 5.7 watt okay so 5.7 watt per square meter kelvin okay so my inside temperature is 0 degree my outside temperature is 1 degree and this glass area is 1 square meter so that means that means there is a difference uh, in, from the inside temperature to outside outside temperature there is 1 degree temperature difference so for every 1 degree temperature difference uh, my uh, i am uh, i am allowing 
2.7 watt heat to enter inside okay for example you you think now chennai we are in chennai okay the outside temperature must be now what uh, almost uh, 40 degree must be now but the inside is not 40 degree because of our uh, uh, because the conduction will take time to uh, uh, happen and the heat will always tra transfer to uh, uh, lower uh, higher temperature to lower temperature okay so for example outside is 40 degree and inside is 30 degree that is a difference in 10 10 degree difference in temperature of 10 degree so if i use this glass in my building then i am allowing 57 watt heat to transfer inside okay because my u value of the glass is 5.7 watt square meter but, but the same scenario if you think for example um, my u value is 2 my glass is 2 okay i am selecting a glass u value is 2 okay so for the same temperature difference i will i will be allowing only 20 watt heat coming inside so just by adjusting the u value of my glass i am i am allowing uh, i am i'm reducing the heat transfer inside my building this this also will have impact on the energy efficiency part of your building okay so the, the, uh, i mean when i when i say i mean uh, when i say there is an impact in energy efficiency part i mean uh, you can't you won't be like uh, completely coming out of the depend dependency of your mechanical ventilation but you can you can easily reduce your time for example uh, if if more inter heat transfer then you have to use your air conditioning for uh, five hours or six hours if less heat transfer you can easily uh, use only for two hours and be comfortable okay so that means four hours of uh, your uh, four hours of your air conditioning running you are reducing okay that is uh, that is that is being energy efficient okay uh, so how how all this how how this is happening uh, this U L U heat gain how and all how we can achieve this how the glass industry is achieving that that is using this coating technology okay here there uh, let's let's go back in the time and uh, uh, like go back to 20 years or something like that uh, that is called this on the coating it will happen in two ways online coating and offline coating okay uh, so here how it will happen is there is only online coating that is uh, the glass will be manufactured uh, through all this uh, manufacturing process and then the glass coating there will be one uh, layer of coating that is metal oxide coating they will uh, 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 they will they will put on that glass and then they will send it to the manufacturer send it out to the uh, uh, shops directly to to be for, for sold okay now what they are doing so in this way what is the disadvantage is there is only because they, while making the glass itself they have to put the coating so so it has only less uh, options in its hand but now there is offline coating uh, that is like the glass will be manufactured separately and then it will it will be taken to the another room where the coat line will be done offline okay there is a vacuum space and then it will be done through the machines uh, offline so so uh, there is no hurry while uh, hurry to do it while the manufacturing process of the glass itself okay so in this offline coating uh, is what we are uh, uh, what any glass you are seeing now it's uh, it's happening in this offline coating only so the benefits would be the online coating is the uh, first first type of glass okay it has it has uh, only one coating can be applied and it has very limited performance uh, the the light part and the heat part it has only limited performance and the aesthetic part also you won't have much options okay but in this offline coating you will have superior energy performance you have limitless op uh, options in aesthetics okay and in the right side uh, you see uh, uh, there is one T two G. That is generation. Okay, so there are six generation of glasses that is been uh, uh, developed till now. The first generation is the uh, one basic where we can see in our old buildings twenty thirty years before. There is a only simple glass, single clear glass, and then only one coating will be there. Okay, and then uh, the second and third generation is all done in offline coating. The first only only is done in online coating. Okay, in this also uh, the two G and three G. That is that is uh, had this metal oxide coating okay metal oxide is uh, the coating they applied in the top of the glass uh, for for the performance to allow light and heat in the building okay to allow good amount of light and good amount of heat in the building okay but uh, from the 4g 5g and uh, 6g there is this silver uh, coating on that okay uh, 4g only one coating 5g two coating and uh, 6g three coating okay so what why why uh, we have to see about this is uh, from the like uh, uh, the, the generation uh, uh, developing develop, uh, the generation developing from 4G to 5G to 6G, the what what innovation they made the the industry made is like uh, the amount of light because glass is the one material as I, as I told earlier. It will allow both the heat and light to 
to transfer inside simultaneously so with this uh, generation of glasses we can take maximum light inside the building and we can we can take only minimum heat to the building okay the light will be maximum the heat will be minimum okay so that is that is what this coating is all about okay so i, I have case studies to explain all these uh, coatings on well you, you will see later stages okay and the next is like um, both the national building code and the bureau of standards the bureau of indian standards they they talked about this uh, acoustic comfort and all okay so so every building typologies uh, they have they have required uh, required decibel levels noise levels okay so for example any any offices or uh, institutions you you can have 35 to 40 decibel that will be comfortable if you if you are having if you are living in an environment where you are hearing only 35 to 45 decibel then you are saying then that means you are living in a comfortable acoustic environment but if you are going more than that then you are not living in a comfortable environment that is a, that is a scenario here okay so the required amount is 35 to 40 35 maximum okay uh, but but the uh, but the area we are living we are having almost for example residential area we are we are having, having almost 55 to 65 in the outside exterior of your building but in the interior you need only 35 okay so you need almost 30 decibel reduction uh, from the exterior to interior to make your environment sound and safe and comfortable Okay, if the question you asked, uh, if glass can do that protection, yes, of course it can. Okay, uh, and you have to see, to understand this, you have to know the basic funda of acoustic uh, comfort, how acoustic works. That is, uh, acoustic will acoustic works parallelly to the density of the material. For example, if your building, if your material is dense enough, okay, then then you can have good protection. Okay, and there is one more factor called uh, reverberation time. Okay, so for example, um, here if you see uh, six mm glass, the RW is the weightage of reduction, and uh, CCDR is a correction factor. Okay, so six mm glass will have uh, will reduce we, it's having weightage of reduction almost thirty two decibel, and eight mm glass are having almost thirty four decibel. But here, uh, though though we have two six mm glass and we have twelve mm air cap inside, it's reducing only thirty uh, decibel. Okay, so here you have to understand one thing correctly. It's not about uh, uh, it's all about density, but how the sound works is there is uh, there is this point called reverberation time. Okay, so so the how the sound travels uh, depends on this. Okay, so uh, if we have two six mm's, then this this is uh, 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 this is acting like a uh, echo box. Okay, so this will this will make the sound uh, sound to shake and stay here for longer time. So that means you are you are you are uh, reducing only uh, uh, less compared to this single plane glasses. Okay, and then uh, uh, so glass being as I said, glass being sustainable material, and uh, this is a proof for that. There is this called EPD Environmental Product Declaration, and uh, one more thing called uh, the. Uh, green core certification the green pro certification this all saying this glass is sustainable material and it has uh, uh, it, it, it is proven and it is certified by different uh, author authorization bodies okay. and uh, we'll come to the next part that is uh, glass and green buildings okay so uh, Green building is all about this, okay? Energy and uh, atmosphere, and then indoor and environmental quality, and then uh, how how we are using this material resources. What are the, some other benefits? Okay, so when it comes to energy and uh, atmosphere, how glass is uh, playing is it has uh, low uh, solar heat gain coefficient. Solar heat gain coefficient is nothing but solar factor. Okay, so glass can have a low solar factor. That means it is allowing less heat to transfer inside, and then. It is having low U value for the glasses. So low U value means again less uh, heat transfer is happening. Optimum VLT is the one which is bringing more light to the building, uh, which is giving you uh, good uh, good good environmental effect. Okay. And then IEQ means uh, indoor environmental quality. You have good visual comfort, thermal comfort, and then acoustic comfort, as we as we have seen from the previous slides. Okay, then material resources. Uh, our glasses, our product, the glass products are verified by the environmental product uh, uh, organizations. And then glass is a recyclable material, so you can easily recycle it from one building and use it in another. And then it is available locally. Uh, we have our, uh, one side, Saint Goblin plant in Chennai itself. Okay, so from that, 
from that uh, whole south india is being transferred from this uh, this vendor only and then one second yeah. Yeah, so uh, then uh, then the other benefits will be like uh, uh, glass is a low voc material that is a volatile organic compounds in the glass is very less so you you, you won't have any uh, sick, sick building syndrome in the build, uh, sick, sick building uh, syndrome effect uh, on the people so next we'll go to the case study so as i have selected three case studies this first case study is about uh, how uh, um, how the solar factor and u value uh, will have impact on the thermal comfort and energy efficiency of the building okay uh, so uh, sorry just just give me one minute So uh, this is one uh, office building, a case study of office building. Uh, so this building is going to have full glass facade. It's about a G plus 10 um, uh, stories in structure. Okay, these are some basic values they took for the simulation. Okay. Uh, so what they did is for this, this is a building uh, uh, prototype. Okay. So for this prototype, what they did, uh, the simulation has been uh, simulation is the one where they will check the performance of the building before before being constructed. Okay. So. Uh, So, uh, what they did is they took five different types of glass, and then uh, each uh, one is like uh, one with just clear glass. D two is double glazed unit. You will have two glasses inside uh, the air gap will be there, and then uh, second one is normal uh, this two G or three G type of glass, and then next one is like one one coating silver, two coating silver, three coating silver. That is like fourth generation, fifth generation, and sixth generation of glasses. So they took different glass products, and then they uh, this is the combination of how they used six mm glass. 12 mm air gap and 6 mm again glass. Okay, so for this typologies, uh, what is the performance of those? Uh, what what will be the performance of the building? They checked. Okay, if you see uh, the first base base case, it has 80 percent VLT visual light transmittance. That means 80 80 percent of the light is coming inside your building. But if you see for the last one, the sixth generation glasses, it allows only 46 percent. But this is good because eighty percent light is coming means uh, definitely glass will be there. Okay, that means though you you used glass, you cannot actually uh, uh, benefit from that uh, glass because uh, more light will come, so you will be using blinds, blinds to cover that, and then sit uh, sit inside with the artificial lighting. Okay, that is not the way uh, to to be uh, efficient. Okay, and then. Though the first glass has 80% VLT, you see the solar factor is 0.76. That means 76% of heat is coming inside. Okay, and the U value is 2.8. But if you see for the last uh, fifth, fifth, gen sixth generation glass, it is like uh, uh, only 0.22 uh, the solar factor and the U value is 1.54. Okay, so you can see the difference between the uh, first generation and the sixth generation glass. Okay, so. Uh, when you check the data, uh, what is the cooling load of these uh, different glasses? The clear uh, using this uh, normal clear glass, it is almost one one or two kilowatt hour. But the sixth generation glasses, it is only sixty two point uh, five uh, kilowatt hour. Okay, that means almost 40, uh, 40 kilowatt hour is being reduced. So, for example. Uh, what good uh, if uh, reducing cooling load will happen means, for example, you you think uh, one office building is paying 10,000 rupees uh, electricity bill in a month. 
Okay, so while reducing this, by using this uh, clear glass, it will pay 10,000. But if you're using this uh, sixth generation glass, it will pay only 6,000. So one month, 4,000 rupees, uh, in 4,000 rupees, they can save in the electricity bill. That is for one month, it, it can go for 40, 50 years till the building's life, uh, lifetime. Okay, this is this is what we call uh, is being sustain. We call it being sustainable. Okay, you can see the gradual. Uh, you can see the difference between all these glasses. The clear DGUs are having almost the highest. Okay, then then uh, with the with the coating decreases, with the generation increases. You can see the difference in the performance. Okay, so uh, uh, cooling load means lower the performance. It is better. And then solar gain. Solar gain means heat gain. How much heat gain is uh, this glass are getting? So this clear glass is getting almost 187 uh, kilowatt hour, but this sixth generation glass is getting only 31. Okay, 80 percent above uh, is uh, heat. 80 percent above is heat is being uh, cut down by 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 just selecting the glass appropriately. Okay, uh, you can see 187. Then next is 97. Next is 73. So the the the, the heat is heat gain is actually reducing with the coating. Uh, coating and generation increases. Okay, so this is the impact of uh, this uh, uh, impact of selecting the appropriate glass with good solar uh, factor and U value will make to the building. Okay, this is this is uh, uh, this is what we must do because you see as as I. In the starting slide, I, I, I show you, I, I have shown you this type of buildings. Okay, you see, all these are glass, all these are made of fully glass. Okay, imagine now if the if the glass being used in this building is not is not uh, selected based on any of these factors. Okay, then that means um, that means the building's energy energy uh, load will be increased much if not selected appropriately. Okay. The next case study is about uh, visual uh, comfort. Okay, how this VLT will impact the visual comfort of the building. Okay, before going to the VLT, you have to know what is WWR. WWR is window to wall ratio. Okay, that means like uh, imagine this is one facade of your building. Okay, uh, how you can determine this WWR is glazing area, total glazing area by total uh, exterior wall area. For example, this is my facade. My facade total wall area is 160 square meter. My uh, glass area is 20 square meter. So the w WR will be uh, uh, calculated by dividing this glass area by exterior wall area. So my WWR of this particular uh, wall is 12.5 percent. Okay. So uh, so this is how uh, this is this. This you can see. For example, uh, what is WWR uh, meant by? So this wall only 10 percent, 10 percent of glass is used. So that is WWR is 10 percent. Okay, so 20 percent. Here the glass is fully used. So that, that is 100 percent. Okay, so this also should be, uh, will be will have direct uh, will have an uh, impact on both this uh, uh, light and heat uh, uh, values of the building because without a proper without considering the climate, without considering the other factors, if you simply uh, put uh, simply, simply use more uh, glazing. Then it will it will result in uh, highest uh, energy consumption only. Okay. Um, so the exam uh, here, what they did this is one office building floor. Okay. So for this, uh, uh, they checked with different uh, uh, VLT of the glass, visual light transmission. Okay. So here, the glass uh, VLT is sixty percent. Okay. So the glass used in this building will allow sixty percent of the, the light to pass inside. Okay, so if 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 you use that type of glass, what is the effect happening in the building is more than sixteen percent of the floor area is having lux 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 is a level uh, lux is the thing where we will measure daylight. Okay, so two thousand two hundred lux it is having more than two thousand two hundred lux. Okay, that means all these sixteen percent of the uh, place will have glare, definite glare. So no one will sit around this side. You have to put blinds along this facade, and then you, you will have no use uh, of giving glass at that side. And you have to sit under the artificial lighting, which is increasing your energy consumption. Okay, so more VLT is not good. That's what I am trying to say. Okay, uh, and. Uh, Less than 110 lux means uh, any any place should have minimum 100 lux and maximum of 2,200 lux. More than that is it, it will create glare. Less than that it won't have any visual uh, impact. 
Okay, so by selecting this 60% VLT, it is having this much uh, impact. And then if it is having 50% VLT, uh, only 8% 8, 8 of the place is uh, uh, getting clear and uh, all the places are getting uh, uh, hundred and uh, all the places are getting equally 110 lakhs. Okay, when you are using 40% VLT, it is only 2.1% uh, 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 places getting uh, glad and all the places are getting 110 lakhs equally. When you use 30% of uh, VLT, it is getting only 1.8% uh, glad and then the uh, rest of the places are getting equally 110 lakhs. But if you are using 20% of VLT, then it is like um, no, no places are getting glad, but almost these places are getting uh, 110 lakhs below. So these places, you, you won't have proper, uh, uh, what to say, you won't have proper lighting levels. Okay, so to, to summarize it, 60% uh, is not good because it is producing 16% glass area. And this 50% uh, also is not good, 8% glare area is coming because, okay, these two you can use. Either 40% VLT for your building you can select, or 30% building, 30% uh, VLT for your uh, uh, building you can select. Okay, because that is giving only 2% or one, uh, two per, around 2% of area glare. So that places alone you can use blinds, or you can, you can, uh, you can, you can address this differently by providing sunshade or something like that. Okay. So this is a, this is how you you will see how uh, see what type of uh, uh, how much your glass should have uh, VLT to make your place comfortable. Next is an uh, uh, how to how to use this retrofitting uh, how, how to put select glass in retrofitting buildings. Okay, for example, any building you are going to uh, retrofit, you don't have to demolish and start from the scratch. You can you can simply uh, uh, change the, the you can simply add, do the addition for your glasses. For example, if uh, the building has a single plane glass, okay, only one single glass is there, you can easily add uh, add to the glass without uh, without uh, breaking the window. You can simply add add one or two more glass. That is the double plane glass or triple plane glass to your building. What would that would bring to your building is before retrofitting you are you are having 35 degree temperature inside okay but after retrofitting with this triple plane glass you will having 31 degree temperature only so there is a four degree temperature inside four may sound less in number but actually it will have more impact on your energy consumption okay for example uh, if if you have 35 degree temperature inside your ac should run two hours to make your place cool but if with 31 degree alone, you, your place will be cooled in one hour or one hour, 15 minutes like that. Okay, so you are reducing one hour of your uh, energy, one hour of your uh, air conditioning running. Okay, uh, so this is the difference between uh, after uh, retrofitting and uh, before retrofitting. Before retrofitting and after retrofitting. So solar factor is this much, so that means 30% of heat is coming inside. So after retrofitting, only 10% of heat is coming inside. So you will use uh, 5 and after retrofitting is only 0 0.8. Okay, so see here, here you can see the performance itself. For the single glazed glass, uh, the air comfort is like uh, discomfort places, okay, comfortable places. So with a single glazed window, okay, uh, with, before retrofitting, at 10 a.m., only 73% of the, your office space is comfortable. At 2 p.m., only 38% is comfortable, rest of all the places are not comfortable. Heat is coming, light is coming. But at 5 p.m., also only 98% is comfortable. But after retrofitting, after adding that, <coughs> sorry, after adding that uh, 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 sandwich glasses, that is two pane or three pane, uh, three pane glasses, um, at 10 a.m. and 5 a.m., 10 a.m. and 5 p.m., your building is fully, your your uh, space is 100% comfortable. And in at two o'clock also, 84% space is comfortable. Only 16% place is not comfortable. Okay, so. This proves uh, the importance of uh, appropriate selection of glasses to your building. Okay. Now come to the we, we came to the last part of our uh, webinar that is innovation in glasses. Uh, this is uh, there is one uh, product called Sage Glass that is being uh, mm. that is being created by this Saint Gobelin. Okay, uh, Saint Gobelin. Uh, this this is the uh, uh, latest. Uh, uh, 
uh, innovation they made uh, in the glass industry okay sage glass is nothing but uh, the glasses we saw till now uh, it, it is static okay that is that means uh, it has it has specific blt and um, specific solar again solar factor for the glass okay and but the glass we are talking now it is smart glass that means uh, the glass will be uh, the glass will be changing itself according to the uh, outside atmosphere okay uh, we will see we will see for example these both are same buildings these both are same building before uh, before you see they have this glass okay and they have this huge blinds because this is full this, this is full glass uh, facade and the light and heat is coming inside the building but and according to the heat and comfort comfortness of the people inside they have to keep on adjusting the blinds uh, up and down up and down okay now what is sage glass is offering is for example uh, you see based on the outside temperature it will automatically create a sheet like like this okay because the outside there is so much of heat and light okay and that will create a, that will create uh discomfort to the people inside you, you as you can see here no one is sitting in, sitting on this sofa here because there is heat and light is coming but here though the timing is same the timing can be 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock the people are sitting here and enjoying because because it created a thin film of sheet itself allowing only optimum light and heat to transfer inside okay this this is nothing but this uh, how this sage glass will work is it is a double glazed unit two glazes unit it has electro chromatic coating inside okay uh, uh, this coating will be activated through sensors so whatever feeding we are giving for example we are saying uh, only uh, my my building is allowed to have only uh, 25 degree heat heat and only 60% or 50% of the light can come inside okay uh, or or lux level you can put only only 500 lux should have uh, should be in my building at all the time if you said like that okay it will automatically change according to the input we are giving okay it will it will create a film like this and it will allow only only 500 lux of light to come inside and only 25 degrees of heat to come inside okay rest and all it will stop okay this is how the sage sage, sage glass will work okay what are the benefits this sage glass can have is for example uh, the one of the factor uh, uh, wherever we are using uh, window it will we have to definitely use shading device because without shading device the window can get damaged the, the the frame can get damaged and then to so much light can come inside and heat can come inside okay so by using this sage glass we don't have to worry about the shading device because it will automatically uh, create a film itself and uh, it, it won't allow excess light to come inside so if there is not excess light coming inside then there won't be possible for glare okay and then there is intelligent intelligent daylight management so so for example uh, how how we are operating our uh, house windows uh, whenever we need light uh, we need light we are just uh, we are opening the window frame and then we are opening the window and then we are setting inside so, uh, for for whenever we need light okay so there is no need for this uh, if we set if if you are comfortable with 600 lux we just have to feed it to the sage glass it will automatically allow 600 glass to uh, glass 600 light inside lux inside at any part of the day okay so you don't have to keep on opening and shutting your glasses okay and it will have uh, it, it will it will have good visual comfort that is like a connection between your interior and exterior and then um, by using this uh, you you can have uh, uh, you can have some benefit in if you are trying to make your building a certified building that means a leed certified or griga certified or igbc certified and then you can have both automation and automatic and manual control for example uh, manual control in the sense someone can So someone can uh, uh, sit and change or uh, uh, with uh, with the connection to the intelligent building system you can easily operate uh, it with their phone for example uh, for example it is it is, a, it is a very good climate outside okay huh? you want you want uh, more light to come inside you can easily uh, you see you can easily change that with the control of your mobile okay you just have to feed uh, your mobile uh, you say i want more light okay um, you, you you bring me 700 lux of light the ch change glass will change uh, will will act according to that okay and then uh, there is in sage glass as of now there are three things one is sage glass next one is sage glass light zone then next one is sage glass uh, harmony it has all these benefits uh, um, 
as I discussed earlier, plus some control. For example, uh, this edge glass uh, light zone it has precise solar control. For example, you you can you can for a for one single glass you can say up to five feet I want no light. After five feet, you can bring light inside. Like that, you can feed and you can uh, have that. And then you have different color renderings. For example, um, I want I want light green shade up to five feet, and then I want gray shade after two after that uh, up to seven feet, and then after seven feet you you can put full black. Like that, you can you can give uh, uh, whatever color renderings you want. You can have the different shades of the glass. In one glass, you have three or four shades color shades. Okay, and then um, in harmony, uh, what we can do is like uh, uh, you you can have this uh, projected uh, thing. For example, you you want there are there are no um, trees around your buildings. Okay, but but in this glass, uh, you can you can create whatever visual uh, image you want, and you can have that displayed in your glass. From only from the only to the interior will be displayed. From the exterior it will be like looking like a single glass itself. But from the interior you can see the glass and you can you can see whatever image you want to see. Okay, and this edge glass concept is not very new to India. Uh, there is one building called uh, Monte Carlo in uh, Ahmedabad. They used this uh, edge glass for the atrium systems. See, this is like uh, Ahmedabad. That is a hot, hotter, um, hot and dry climate region. Okay, in that at afternoon two o'clock it is like this. It is looking like uh, evening six o'clock or something like that. Okay, it is because of the control that is fed to this uh, uh, sage glass. Okay, and others are some example of sage glasses in in uh, in, in around the world uh, that is used by Saint Bobli. Okay, uh, this is a school in uh, Dubai. Uh, now I will see. The, I will tell you the working condition. For example, uh, this is this is looking normal. Okay, so with the with the time going like ten o'clock, eleven o'clock, the time going. It, it will change itself by giving this shade. Okay, so it will it will uh, create uh, it will still maintain the comfort of the people that is uh, residing inside. Okay, but mod morning twelve o'clock or something like this, it is it is it is like this half or semi covered, and then afternoon two o'clock it is fully covered. Okay, and then again again uh, uh, next day or next day morning or evening it will go back to normal like this. Okay, it is like keep on it will be keep on working around the clock. As a control, we are fitted uh, to them. Okay, this is another uh, school in uh, Switzerland. As you can see, this is morning time, and then uh, after time passing, it will it will create a slim sheet like this itself. Okay, this is precise solar control. So um, uh, at the top only it is like covered. At bottom we don't be it's not covering. So it is allowing to maintain the daylight inside. At the same time, it is not allowing it to excess and create discomfort. Okay, this is one um, office building um, in USA. So you see, for example, uh, with the sun, it is it is like the sunflower. Okay, if the sun tracking, it will change. For example, this side it will allow the light to come, and one side it will cover it fully. Okay, so so optimum light will be always maintained. Okay, so uh, that's it. Uh, we came to the end of the uh, seminar. If any questions, uh, you people have, I can. I'm ready to answer that. Uh, so the participants uh, can now drop your questions in the chat box. Else, you can unmute yourself and ask your questions directly to the speaker. Hi, hi. Technical. Uh, 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 I just want to cover them the topic because uh, I'm seeing many of the people they are using glass and when the juror asked why you use this much glass they are not in a position to defend defend themselves. Okay, I just want to give them the chance for defending themselves. So if any of them are using or or making their project surrounding the glass material, then you can easily uh, uh, state these factors and defend yourselves. Okay, that's why I choose this topic for this webinar. Is there uh, any doubts or any questions? Uh, sir, I don't see any questions coming up. Uh, 
ओके मैम ओके मैम we shall wait for 2 minutes so that to uh, if there is any question we can ask otherwise we can wind up the session sir okay ma'am okay ma'am okay, ma sir i believe the session was wonderful and there is no question that has popped out of the session there might be any other future queries which can be directed to you so that uh, you can answer it probably later can i share any of your email ids or any other details to the students so that if they have any um need they can contact come back to you contact yes ma'am definitely ma'am i'm happy to share that so i shall share your email id with my students so if there is any doubt uh, they can uh, probably contact you through your email id for further questions yes ma'am okay ma'am i'm i'm okay with that uh, thank you surya prakash sir it's a wonderful session on sustainability uh, more than the functional part of it there were many statistical data that was presented which was which is uh, way ahead of our uh, of uh, at least to my understanding it's way ahead because i have never been a part of such statistical calculation in terms of sustainability uh, the data that you have presented is well formatted and it was very easy for us to understand from my perspective i believe that students must also be uh, thinking the same uh, thank you so much for being with us on this wonderful occasion on this wonderful session for this wonderful session and i would like to thank the college management principal hod and dean for giving me an opportunity to uh, be a part of this annual lecture series in mama sadak ej academy of architecture and i thank all the participants for, for being with us like for the past one one and a half one hour i believe uh, you have been so patient and enthusiastic thank you so much uh, thank you surya prakash sir thank you so much um, my colleagues and students you can all uh, now leave the session thank you so much thank you ma'am